everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Um, today's story is really exciting. Um, it's actually dedicated to a friend of mine who joined the army recently. So, you know, whenever she sees this, good luck. And this story is for you. So, the next woman in history that I'm going to be talking about, her name is Remedios Gomez Paraíso also known as Commander Liu Weiwei, and she is this badass guerrilla warrior that didn't let a little war get in the way of her image. Stunning in red lipstick and a uniform, she made grown men cry and whimper in fear of her. Um, and it's really exciting. I've been looking at this case and looking at the story and just like getting all the feels. So let's get into it. Uh, Remedios Gomez was born in July 1918 and she came from wholesome beginnings you know she went to high school she learned to ride horses she would sell rice and sew uh, dresses part-time to help support her family and she even won a local beauty contest hence the beauty queen her father Basilio Gomez was mayor of the Pampanga area in the Philippines and a noted leader in his community. Um, but in 1942, the height of the Second World War, uh, the Japanese Empire invaded the uh, Philippines and was making its way to the local area of Pampanga. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong. If I am, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, Basilio organized, um, organized along with another group uh, to fight the foreign invaders and he refused to step down but shortly after he was arrested and tortured and killed by the Japanese army and his body was paraded around town and as an extra insult um, the Japanese army refused to give the body over to the family so yeah that's pretty traumatic um, from that day on Remedios vowed to avenge her father and joined the Hugbalahap, also known as Huk, Huk's, um, the People's Anti-Japanese Army, um, to fight against the invading forces. So talk about, a, you know, an origin story. If we ever needed a superhero, Marvel, get on it. So, her mother was actually very hesitant about her joining this this army because she's heard of Japanese soldiers being ruthless to wayward girls or girls that they have kidnapped and assaulted. Um, she was very worried about her daughter falling into their hands. So her brother Oscar joined with her. He said, okay, you won't do this alone. I'll, I'll join with you. Remedios started as a nurse, a field nurse or the equivalent of a field nurse, but everyone had to go through combat training. So she quickly proved herself to be a competent soldier and rose in the ranks, gaining the nickname uh, Commander Li Weiwei, which translates to Commander Dawn. And so, so the Japanese was gaining ground and the hooks were outnumbered and they were told to retreat by their leading commander. Well, Remedio said, hell no, I am staying right here. And she kept on until it was the Japanese that were retreating in fear. Let me tell you, a determined woman can make anyone fearful. So she gained a reputation after that. Um, the Japanese ar army was actually afraid of her because she gained that reputation of being totally ruthless. That she could even ride on her horse to the nearby town to let the Japanese soldiers know that the hooks were nearby and you know to get moving or to get prepared or whatever like a fair warning um man what a legend can you imagine just going into a town and being like hey my posse's around be prepared we're gonna fight you <laughs> this wasn't without some pushbacks right so some internal pushbacks see Remedios was also getting notoriety for something else she cared a lot about her image. So she was very well groomed at all times. She would have her nails painted, her hair done, 
um, and always with red lipstick. She would put red lipstick on before battle. And she was a beauty queen after all, right? And she would explain later on in her memoirs, she did, in, in her memories or various like interviews that this was like a ritual for her and it would let her squadron of almost over 200 people, right? 200 soldiers be confident in her ability to stay calm and fearless in battle, but also to kind of like remind herself that she is fighting for the right to be herself. She wouldn't allow this male dominated surrounding suppress her femininity. And honestly, I gotta tell you, side story, this is totally separate. I've broken up with people over lipstick and that sounds stupid, but when you're in like a domineering relationship where they want to like control every aspect and kind of like put you down, the simple act of putting on something to make you feel confident really does make the difference. So I can, I can see why that ritual would be good. Like, so like I said, this, this wasn't all that popular internally. Some male soldier told her once that she was so pretty that all she had to do was lay down if the Japanese ever showed up. And now it's not confirmed if that guy survived the colossal beatdown after that, but um, pretty, but with a bite. <laughs> um, there were also stories of her group rescuing an American pilot. I don't know if this was relevant to her general story, but Bob Tanner was shot down from a plane and um, her squadron was the one that rescued him. And they stayed friends until well after, like until the very end. So, the Japanese army surrendered in 1945, and the Hooks were told to lay down their arms, later merging into the Socialist Party, the PKP. That they won a lot of seats in the, in the following election in 1946, and, you know, they were starting to gain popularity. However, because of American-U.S. Cold War politics, there was a lot of anti-communist sentiment. So they were taken down from their governmental seats. Now, the Hooks were pissed, right? They weren't getting recognized by, like other guerrilla forces were. And that they helped during World War II, and they still weren't getting recognized. Um, they were being arrested and discriminated against. They were being, you know, tracked down, taken out. And so they took up, they went back, they took up their arms again, and they started their own rebellion also known as the Hook Rebellion. What does this have to do with women? Right, I'm getting to that. So remember her brother Oscar, the one who joined the army for her, with her? Well, he became the head of the Democratic Alliance of Central Luzon and wanted to go back to being a civilian. He just wanted a peaceful life and move on from the war. And, but the opposing government was not very happy with him because of his his alliance with the Hooks. So he was tracked down, ambushed, and killed. And so Remedios gathered up her comrades again, joined the rebellion, and fought, and felt as if there was no other option but to fight. She picked up her arms and joined the rebellion. She felt like she had to protect genuine freedom. I mean, yeah. This didn't go very well, right? She was captured and imprisoned in, 1990, in 1947 along with others for attempted overthrowing of the government and terrorism. She felt different. She felt like they were just targeting her because of her alliance with the Hooks and because they're considered communist or socialist. Um, and so she declared it. She went straight up to the president, Manuel Rojas at the time, and told him that he was wrong and that she was truly fighting for the people of the the peasants, right? Not terrorizing them as he was so boldly saying that she was. So some time passed and she was released a year later because there was no proper investigation prior to her detention. So like they didn't do their due diligence, right? Some time passes on and everyone's feeling a little romantic. So there's a side story here that adds a little color to the plot. There are some star-crossed lovers. Remedios is part of the Hooks, but then there was also this other group known as um, the PKP. 
And one of the PKP members is Benang Paraiso. And he was their biggest, their best warrior and cousin to the leaders of that group. And so seeing as Remedios was the best warrior of that, of this group, the Hooks, they decided to marry to marry to resolve the uh, conflict that had between them. So yes, it was a marriage of convenience, but Remedio l- later on says that um, she found a true partner and perfect husband in him. So, you know, I'm sensing a pattern here with strong-willed ladies. Hmm. Guys, make note. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with my eyes here. I'm kind of like just talking about the story because it's so interesting. So, they did have a child together named Oscar after her late brother. And um, they set up a school for other rebels to study military tactics and politics. But... That didn't last very long because they were betrayed by Paraiso's friend, Frank Gloria. And, you know, some of these situations, they tend to happen. The guy was a dick. He basically told the the opposing government where they were, what time they were going to be there, what was going on. From what I read, Gloria had a brand new pair of Keds. And at the time, it was actually really hard for some of these guerrilla soldiers to get brand new rubber-soled shoes. So this guy stood out quite a bit. And they were like, okay, well, where'd you get these shoes? Turns out the opposing government gave him the shoes so that he would um, release the information about the guerrilla school. Um, They got raided by the government and were thrown into prison. Well, many years later, Remedios' release, there was no note about what happened to the the hubby, but I'm guessing he didn't really make it. But the boy did, the little boy did. Oscar made it, we're good. She gets released out of prison and starts supporting herself and her son by selling vegetables. Um, She supported her son until he got his degree in engineering, married a lovely girl, and moved to the Middle East. Um, I'm not sure what he's what he's doing now, but he had two little boys and left the two little boys with his mother. So the two grandchildren, I don't have their names here on file, but she raised them as her own. She told them stories about her time in the jungle being a freedom fighter. She would tell them in such vivid detail. She continued being a very important part of her community. And she served the executive committee of Hook Veterans Organization, you know, volunteering her time to help her fellow comrades. She's been interviewed quite a bit and she's become kind of a local hero with good reason. I don't know, there was, it like, it's such a kind of, stand, like, not standard, but mundane existence after all of that, right? She, her life, her early life was so exciting. I'm going to finish this look real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. This is very dramatic, I know, but I'm really digging it. And of course, an ode to Remedios herself, I put on a bright red lip, um... I'm not mad about it. I kind of like it. Makes me feel powerful. So, the Hulk movement, while mostly comprised of common folk, poor folk, um, and originally meant to fight off foreign invaders, the most notable contribution to Filipino society was their inclusion of women in their ranks. Then Alizona, in her book Amazon, uh, Amazons of the Huck Rebellion, Uh, describes that women, while sometimes felt ignored um, or undervalued, the experience and political education they acquired transformed their sense of identity and their vision uh, of transforming Philippine society. And imperfectly, the Hugs instituted what was just the beginning of a sexual and gender revolution that remained 
unfinished to this day. So basically the hugs kick-started um, women's rights in the Philippines. We kind of saw in the U.S. too with um, women being included in the workforce due to the war. It makes sense that it would happen in the Philippines as well, but to a to a greater degree because they fought alongside each other. Um, Remedios unfortunately died in 2014 at the age of 93, having led an extraordinary life of passion, sadness, tragedy, and rebellion in all sense senses, not just political, but social too, uh, shrugging off the feminine expectations and ramming headfirst into guerrilla combat with her trademark red lips. Um, like and subscribe if you like this story. If you want to hear more stories like this one, let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye. Lu Wei Wei. Lu Wei Wei or Li Wei Wei? And if you need any more inspiration, then I don't know what to tell you.